mile on the pole. Ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the GNC2 main event? Make some noise. On the pole, ladies and gentlemen, the rider comes to us from Warren, Oregon. The Racing Unlimited Kawasaki EX650 Parkinson Brothers Racing entry number 67M, Dashin Davis Fisher. Starting second from Buse Cyrus, Ohio, the Smith Racing Kawasaki entry number 24F, last week's winner, J.R. Addison. Starting third from Mont Moton, Pennsylvania, the Varns Racing Roy Bilt Kawasaki, third generation racer, 68, Revan Ryan Varns. Fourth starter, fourth pick on the front row, the Kennedy Racing XR750 Harley Davidson, the rider from Salinas, California, the 11Z, the Daytona flat track winner, Andrew Luker. Starting Fifth, uh, from Mount Vernon, Ohio, the Mid-Ohio Honda FNS Worldwide Harley-Davidson, number 72F, Tyler Butts. And the last rider on the front row, he comes to us from Chesterfield, Virginia, the Ron Ayers Motorsports Kawasaki 650, number 16S, our fast qualifier, that is Tristan Avery. Row number two looks like this. The rider comes to us from Barrington, New Hampshire. Number 627U on the Roy Built Moose Racing Kawasaki. That is Jameson Minor. Starting eighth on row number two from Warrington, Pennsylvania, the Bill Warner Racing Kawasaki. Number 54A, the tall drink of water. That is Dan Bromley. Starting night from Mount Vernon, Ohio, from sponsored by Make It Foundation and CDJ. It's a Suzuki DL1000, number 47F, Austin Conant. Starting 10th from Salinas, California, now makes his home in Illinois. The Lombardi's Harley-Davidson entry. It is the number 30C. They call him Brombo, Bronson Bauman. Starting 11th. From Sherwood, Oregon, it's the Walrath Trucking Kawasaki EX650, number 16M, Austin Helmholtz. Last rider on row number two from Norco, California, it's the Gokin Racing Chip Chisholm Racing Suzuki DL1000. It's the 44E, the former points leader, Nick Armstrong. Our next rider, he is from points, parts unknown. He's riding the Kawasaki EX650 GP Racing and 56P Racing. Number 89C, that is Chris Boone. Starting 14th from Albion, New York, the M&J Racing Fat Guys Racing Kawasaki 94B, Flying Ryan Wells. Starting 15th from St. Louisville, Ohio, the Gray Hogs Englehart Racing Kawasaki. Number 23F, Jeffrey Lowry. Starting 16th from Aurora, Indiana, also a former Daytona flat track winner on the bike, Mike Butler Racing Kawasaki, 24J, Brandon Wilhelm. Starting 17th from Pine Grove, Pennsylvania, the Big A's Customs Kawasaki, the 14A, Dalton Gautier. And your last starter from Modesto, California, the Mac Daddy Racing, Zanotti Racing, Suzuki DL1000, 23Z, James Monaco. That is the starting lineup for your 12-lap GNC2 main event, 18 riders. And we had the fastest riders on, the ro on three rows of six. They get one lap to check out the racetrack. They call it a siding lap, and we'll stage them up, and we will go racing here at the Magic Mile. Chris, are you ready? I am ready. These guys uh, get a lap, kind of see uh, all the riders that ran in the heat race are going to be faced with a totally different racetrack. They were out when the thing was brand new after uh, about 45 minutes to an hour of uh, track prep. Racetrack has undergone uh, quite a few changes, so uh, these riders up on the front row uh, and a good portion of this, oh, all of the second row as well are faced with uh, different conditions. And with the sun going down, we might start to see a little bit of moisture come up. Uh, things could be a little interesting here. Another element we are watching, you can see there is a Kimco scooter on the back straightaway. They, we had two adult deer came up to the back straightaway wall. They just wanted to watch the race. But well, you in know, all honesty, if they jump in front of these riders, it would not be good. Uh, did anybody charge them admission? That's I, what I, I want to know. Maybe that's why we're waiting. We're trying to make sure they go <laughs> to the front gate to pay admission. So making sure those deer are cleared down there on the back straightaway. And we're going to send them around for the siding lap right now so everybody gets to check out the racetrack. They've already picked their starting picks on whichever row that they have qualified for. We'll give them one lap to check out the racetrack, and we will turn them loose here at the Magic Mile. 
track is completely different than when some of these first riders went out because remember they were the first heat race right when we started at seven o'clock tonight but one thing that hasn't changed they're still kicking up dust on the back straightaway so when they the, get this, up there, this get corner if they get hooked up all of a sudden they get a little bit more forward grip that that concrete wall on the on the back straightaway certainly comes up quick uh, they've kind of built a little bit berm a little bit of a berm up along the side of it allows them to kind of kind of lean the bike before they get get to the walls uh, uh, these guys are coming around, taking a look, getting one last view of the racetrack lined up. I'm sure a lot of these riders are uh, having a few butterflies fluttering in their stomach at the moment. Uh, as soon as that green light goes on, you can throw them out the window. So Davis Fisher, our fast qualifier, takes the very outside of the front row. Right beside him is J.R. Addison. Then we got the 16S of Avery. So Barnes moved inside a little, a few positions, or one position. He he liked the better shot from right there in the middle. Keep your eyes on the 72. Have Tyler Butts. The inside worked a couple times for Stevie Bonzi. We'll see if Tyler Butts gets a good start from the inside of the front row. Yeah, we've seen some good starts of late. You know, uh, you know, it's a shorter distance to turn one, and if you're in front, you can kind of control the racetrack and kind of go wherever you want. And when you're on the outside and you don't quite get the start, you're kind of at the mercy of five riders to your inside. So you're going to have to have to be on your toes starting on the outside. All right, 10-second board. It's up. It's already down. We're going racing in about five seconds. The clutches are in. Bikes are going in gear. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with the Magic Mile. GNC2, main event. The light turns green and the clutches come out. Avery's in the very center of the racetrack. Into turn one they go. It's Butts on the very inside. They're five wide, Chris. Five wide going into turn one. Through the middle of turns one and two. They kind of filter down to four, down to three for second. But Davis Fisher, 67M with the whole shot from the outside. Carries his momentum. Leads it off down into turn three at the, at the here in the beginning. And Tyler Butts from the very inside. He was in the second spot. Now here comes Barnes up the inside now. So it's Barnes. And now here comes Bromley goes to the high side. Bromley on the 54A. He's coming through from the second row up to the, up to the third spot, Chris. Well, we see some of these riders kind of go three wide down the straightaway. It doesn't do a whole lot of good for your drafting. You want to try and line up behind the leader coming off the corner. And these guys will learn that as they gain a little bit more experience. We see the 68 of Ryan Barnes kind of tucked up under, under down on the inside, doing everything he can to, to line up and uh, get a toe from the leader. We'll try to see if the leader can break away. It's Davis Fisher right now. Revan Ryan Barnes in second. Bromley's in the third spot. Behind him is the first Harley Davidson. It's the 11Z of Andrew Luker. He goes to the high line where Brad Baker was running, and that seems to be working for the Harley. It certainly does. These Harleys uh, don't have the ability to do the point and shoot. I just got done talking to some of the GNC1 riders. The guys on the Harleys are kind of excited. They think it's a Harley racetrack. This track with it open in the middle with that little mini stretch allows them to kind of keep their momentum up as we see Luker doing here Whoa. in the fourth position kind of gets gets he turned up underneath it coming off at of turn two. Falls all the way up into second. Wow. From it, fourth to second, one corner. Amazing move right there. So Fisher's in the lead, and that's allowing Fisher to pull away a little bit, which is not what anybody else wanted to see. But Davis Fisher out front now is Fisher. Luker's in second. Bromley's in the third spot. It's a dogfight from there. Avery is up to the fourth spot on the 16S. Oh, you know, we had the 27U. A Jameson Miner stick his nose in there a little bit, uh, makes contact with the outside wall coming off of turn four. These guys are desperate to get up to the front and see if they can have anything oh, for the 67 man. of of, uh, of, of Davis Fisher, and Luker inches forward. Luker's closing the gap right now. It's Davis Fisher, Andrew Luker, Tristan Avery, Dan Bromley, Ryan Barnes is your top five. J.R. Addison, Jamison Miner, Nick Armstrong, Bronson Bauman, Dalton Gauthier rounds out your top ten. Looks like a little bit of debris on the inside of turn number three. A little bit of debris. I didn't quite Ooh. catch a glimpse of that as uh, Luker gets up dangerously close to the air fence through the middle of turns three and four, but he keeps his momentum up, holds the position. Davis Fisher's got some head shake on the 67M into turn number one. Doesn't seem like it's bothering him. Avery comes up there on the 16S to take over the two spot. Luker back to the third. Jamison Miner's looking for a way through. Look at this dogfight for the lead. Here they come off a of turn. I'm a lost pack, man. They're going so fast. Down the back straightaway they go. It's Fisher. Fisher leads them down the back straightaway. Avery's in second. Luker's in third. Wilhelm's in fourth. Bromley now, who's in second a few moments ago, is back in fifth. Yeah, we're going to see this uh, a lot in this race. A lot of swapping of positions through the corners. A lot of ebb and flow. But there's no change at the front as the 67M. Uh, Davis Fisher starting to come under pressure from the 16S. 
Avery wow. up the inside, gets a good draft. Tracked, tracked him down and passed the leader. Tristan Avery's got himself a fast Kawasaki, and he is riding it right now. So five laps are complete of 12. And it's Avery now your leader. It Fisher right little, there in the two spot. A little sideways coming off of turn two, and uh, Davis Fisher has to check up a little bit. Still able to reestablish his momentum as we start to see these guys shake a little bit. Uh, headed off into turn three. But Avery finished second on four. 450s at the Sacramento Mile. He loves these mile racetracks. He's where he needs to be. This kid's, a, kid's a moving toward the front. Great drive off turn four. Fisher See if he can complete the pass by the start finish line. Not quite. Halfway flags are out. Keep your eyes out for Nick Armstrong. Remember, he comes through the pack later on. He's back in the eight spot, so we'll keep our eyes on him. Oh, the leader has a bobble right there in the middle of turns one and two. Avery has nowhere to go. He's right behind him. So it's Fisher, Avery. Here comes the third place rider. It's J.R. Addison. He won last week. He's got some momentum. Now he's caught up to the leaders. Fisher has some head shake right at the end of the straightaways. Well, yeah, we're starting to see these things uh, pick up a little bit more shake as uh, Avery up the inside rubbing, uh, rubbing the front wheel up on the number plate there, the 67. These guys getting a little head shake. Sometimes these things start to handle a little bit like a wheelbarrow full of alligators. You know, these guys got their hands full as they uh, head them off into turn one. Avery up the inside trying to take the lead. Whoa, Whoa Avery. Hang on. Great save. Avery kind of gets sucked in a little bit. His, uh, his foot gets kind of sucked back behind him as he uh, collides a little bit there with Andrew, Andrew Luker, Luker, but that was a great save. Got kind of sucked up, up the inside but of the 67. The bad news is he lost all his momentum, but he's only falling back to third. So Luker's right there in the four spot. So now it's Davis Fisher, now J.R. Addison in second. He sets his sight on the leader. Remember, he won last weekend. He's trying to track down our points leader, which is Fisher on the 67M. He's trying not to have anything to do with it. Now I wonder if he knows the same riders there, if he knows he's got a different rider coming up there. Well, Here comes <laughs> Addison. Well, he's going to almost got a view there. It looked like uh, the 24F kind of thought about putting a wheel up Whoa. the inside as, uh, as Fisher kind of turns kind of early, straightens out the inside, makes it for a yeah. tight exit, kind of kills his momentum coming off of turn well, two. Is he changing the line because the track's changing or is he changing it because he's trying to play defense? Well, I think he changed it a little bit because he uh, the lap prior, he kind of rear end stepped around and he caught a little hole and right now we see the 16 now of uh, Tristan Avery running up around the outside, keeping his momentum up. Takes well, over it, second. Looking takes over lead. second, up around the outside, runs quite out of room. Man, this is a dog fight. Well, they are all the way up against the front straightaway wall, and there's a, a bunch of loose dirt up there, so it's scary for all these riders, especially behind them. It's Fisher out front, Avery's in second, Wilhelm's in the third spot, Luker's in fourth, Dan Bromley fifth, Jameson Miters in sixth, Barnes, Nick Armstrong, Bauman, and Wells round out your top ten. These top three kind of breaking away from our uh, race for, for fourth. Uh, three Kawasaki's up front, Fisher, Avery, Addison, all these kids were, I don't think any of them won the Horizon Award, but they were all eligible for it over the last two or three seasons. All had Here a shot to win it at one time Avery. or another. They all got some wobbles going down into the corner. They got their hands full, so it's Fisher now as he's pushing up the racetrack, and Tristan Avery's trying to go around the outside and take the lead. Uh, the 24F of Addison is right there. Now they all drop to the bottom of the racetrack. Here they come off of number two down the backside. We're just about out of laps. A lap and a half remaining is all we got. Fisher, Avery, Addison into turn number three. Avery takes a look at the lead. Up the inside, moves over uh, in front of the 67M. Tristan Avery leading off a of turn four. Let's see what he has uh, in the race to the line. See if this is a good good preview for uh, lap 12. White flag is going to fly this time by. There it is. It's Avery. Fisher and Addison is right there, the 24F. Anything can happen. This is the final lap. Three riders have broken away. They want to battle for the leader for the podium spot. Fisher's struggling a little bit, turns one and two. Now he grabs a handful, tries to skid on the back wheel. Here comes Addison around the outside. Addison, now these guys are going to be fighting for the draft, coming down the back straightaway. It looks like Fisher holds up, doesn't try to force the issue. He's going to try and line up, get a draft pass to the line. Avery looking for his first ever GNC, win, GNC 2 win. Here he comes off a of four. Chris, I'll let you call it. But Avery lights it up a little bit off the inside, coming off at of turn four, but he gets a good drive. I think he's got enough. Tristan For Avery takes the win, the 16S, his first win of his career, and it's right here at the Magic Mile. What a good race we had right there. Avery, who left last week in the ambulance, so had to get checked out. Uh, comes home with the win here today. So It's wow. great to see how far this young man has come over the last year. Uh, horrific accident in the amateur nationals uh, in, one, year ago. In, uh, one year ago he comes back wins in his second outing on a GNC2 twin 
gets himself a victory here at the DuCoin Magic Mile. This is a magical performance from a kid who uh, was fighting for his life as, as, as 12 months ago. As you said earlier in the in the qualifying practice, he's got a few broken digits over there on his right foot. It doesn't look like it's slowed him down. Tristan Avery, hey, you, he always uses the hashtag to the front on all of his posts. Look how excited he is. Tristan Avery takes the win. Davis Fisher will take second. J.R. Addison third. Dan Bromley fourth, Ryan Varnes fifth, Andrew Luker comes home sixth, so he faded a little bit. Jamison Miner will get seventh, eighth will be Bronson Bauman, ninth is Wells, tenth is Nick Armstrong, so he lost a couple of spots. Eleventh on back is Tyler Butts, Dalton Gauthier, Jeffrey Lowry, Brandon Wilhelm, Austin Conn at 15th, Chris Boone 16th, James Monaco 17th, and Austin Helmholtz rounds out your field. I believe he picked up his older brother. Older brother brother Hayden Avery uh, going for a, a victory lap. This is great to see Hayden, a pretty good racer in his own right. Doesn't ride as often, kind of tr tries to spend as much time uh, helping his little brother as possible. He, too, was in the hospital uh, 12 months ago, uh, worried, sick about uh, the future of his little brother. And here they are 12 months later sharing a victory lap in DuCoin. That's a great story right there. That's a comeback story of the year in my book. Absolutely. And just remember, one year ago, he was an amateur as the Dirt Track Grand Championships last year for a few years. We're actually at Springfield. Now they have been moved over here to DuCoin. And they'll be on the Magic Mile on Monday. 16 years old, not quite to us. He turned 16 right before Daytona earlier this year. Uh, 16 years and four months winning at DuCoin. That's a special family moment right there going through turns three and four. Uh, congratulations to Chip Avery, who's uh, who's uh, put a lot of work into these two kids. It's great to see that, uh, that hard work get rewarded here tonight. Absolutely, congratulations to all of our podium finishers. Third spot, J.R. Addison, he won last week. Our points leader finishes second to 67M. And Tristan Avery, wearing the old Mike Hacker Super Trap Leathers, takes home the victory on the 16S. Uh, he'll have to try to find that victory podium. It's not too easy to find here. It's not too easy, but you do have to turn left to get to well, it. Well, he can figure that out. We, yeah. We saw that already. So his brother <laughs> jumps off the back. Here comes the winning motorcycle. And in just a second, Danny Medine will be up there with our winner. See, they've actually got some duct tape on the front of that motorcycle, just like Lima last week, because it's a pretty paint job on that bike. I know that's paint by Smokey did that one. Yeah, I'm sure they're trying to preserve that, but uh, congratulations to Tristan. Get his helmet off. Wait for him to get his helmet off, and we'll throw it down to a Danny Medine with an, a very excited Tristan Avery. Danny? Thanks, you guys. What a great race. Tristan Avery, you have to be so pumped right now taking your first ever GNC2 win. You guys make some noise for Tristan. Now, you have been racing with a broken foot. This isn't football. You guys are nuts. How does it feel? Uh, it's pretty sore right now, but uh, racing out there, you don't really notice any pain, and you're just going to the front and trying to be the number one guy. And I lucked out tonight and ended up being the number one guy, and I couldn't be more proud of my team and my crew and my brother and my family and everyone else. They have been putting in tremendous work to the bike and getting it ready for this race and not only that but ending next weekend and I can't thank them enough and I like to dedicate this win to my mother she passed away uh, when I was nine months old and I'm dedicating it to her tomorrow's her birthday and I couldn't be more happier to get a win for her you guys make some noise now you have an awesome team behind you. you have great sponsors who would you like to thank uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ron Ayers Motorsports, Scott's Power, Power Sports, sorry, Saddleman, Showy Helmets, uh, Vortex, Ride Academy, Super Trap, my dad, Rhino Power, my brother, uh, Bugner Racing Suspension, uh, Denise, and everyone else who helps me out. I can't thank you much for getting my bike on the top of the podium, not only that, but myself, and I can't thank uh, everyone enough. Everyone. I mean, this is a dream come true, and I've finally done it, and it's been waiting a long time, and now I'm able to show it, so I'm proud now. Awesome work. And now we're going to step over to our current points leader, Davis Fisher. You kind of said you were disappointed, but in all reality, you took a second-place finish here at the Decoin Mile. You have to be pretty satisfied with that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, uh, we're still coming out of here with a points lead, so that's a long-term goal with uh, just stay, stay consistent and uh, hopefully get that championship at the end of the year. Um, I was leading the whole race, basically, and uh, Tristan came up here, and uh, we kind of had a shutoff contest going into the corners. It made it really 
a real fun race, and uh, he uh, pulled away from me, and I uh, spun it off up the corner. But uh, congrats to Tristan on his first win. Now you have a great group of sponsors behind you. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank Parks and Brothers Racing, Bob Lanfears, Beaverton Honda, Allied Motors, The Fox, Dan Wall Racing, Race Tech Suspension, my uncle Ryan, Team 95, Nikki Hayden, Ari Helmets, Saddleman, and uh, everyone else who I forgot. Make some noise for Davis Fisher. And now J.R. Addison taking third place. You did win last weekend, but you have to be pretty happy with a third place finish here at Two Coin. Yeah, I'm definitely happy to get up on the podium again. You know, um, I got off to a pretty good start and I kind of sat back behind Davis and Tristan and watched them have a good race. I just couldn't quite get there, but um, it was definitely a fun race. How much has the track changed from practice qualifying to now? The track's gotten a ton better. It was all dry and rough in practice, starting to smooth out definitely, and there's a lot of moisture in it. Congratulations on your third place finish. And race fans, make some noise for our AMA Pro GNC2 podium finishers. We're going to hop back in here real quick. Tier Addison, you have a great team behind you. Who would you like to thank? Yeah, definitely Smith Racing. Barry Smith has put in an incredible amount of work into this bike. Um, my mom, dad, my girlfriend Stevie, of course. Parkinson Brothers Racing, definitely. Uh, Motorcycle Superstore, Bell Helmets, K&N. Uh, fuel clothing, Evans cooling, 